بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم صدق الله العظيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا سيدي يا حبيب الله All praise, honor, glory belongs to Allah Almighty Endless peace, blessings upon our master sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Upon his companions, his family, his wives Allah Ta'ala raised ranks of all the awliya, all the shuhada all the righteous, rightly guided ulama of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah give us tawfiq to benefit from the seerah and to implement the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam in our lives. We are now going to speak about the 11th year after the hijrah, the final year of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam of his physical life. In this year, there was the incident of jaysh e Another name for this army is the Sariya of Osama. The last army which was to be sent by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself for jihad. On Monday the 26th of Safar in the 11th year Hijri, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made preparations to do battle with the Romans and he called Hazrat Osama bin Zaid radiyallahu anhu on the following day saying, I appoint you as the leader of this army and instruct you. I instruct you to go to Abna, the place where your father was made Shaheed. You should suddenly attack the Kuffar there so that they do not have the opportunity to prepare themselves for battle. With his own blessed hands, the Prophet ﷺ then prepared the flag of Islam whilst he was unwell. And he handed it over to Hazrat Usama ibn Zaid radiyallahu anhuma, saying, Uhzu bismillahi wa fi sabilillahi faqatil man kafara billah. Meaning, fight in the name of Allah and make jihad in the path of Allah and struggle against those, fight against those who disbelieve in Allah. The Sahabi then selected Hazrat Buraida ibn Khasib anhu as the flag bearer of his army. And after leaving Medina Munawwara, he pitched a tent at a place called Jaraf, a few miles from Medina, in order to gather the army. The Prophet ﷺ had also instructed the esteemed Ansar and the Muhajirun to take part in this battle. Although some had felt that when the old and experienced of them were present. Hazrat Usama anhu, who was no more than 20 years old, some of them felt that he's too young to lead this army. <coughs> the Prophet ﷺ was disturbed by this, upon hearing this. And although he was unwell, he ascended on the mimbar and with his, whilst his blessed hands were bandaged and he gave a speech, a sermon and he said, if you people doubt the ability of Hazrat Usama in being the leader of this army, then know that you have also doubted his father Hazrat Zaid as being a leader of an army. I swear by Allah, his father Zaid bin Harith, عنه, he was an able general and Usama is also as well. He is from amongst my beloved Sahaba, just as how his father was. Therefore, accept that Usama ibn Zaid is from the best amongst you. After this khutbah, after this speech, the Prophet ﷺ went back into his home and his illness increased. On the 10th of Rabi al Awwal, a few people came to him to ask for permission to join the Muslim army at Jaraf. And a day later, the Prophet ﷺ, his health further deteriorated. Hazrat Usama ibn Zaid then came to visit the Prophet sallallahu and to ask for permission to leave. He was seen by the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who, because of his 
being unwell, he did not say anything to him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continuously lifted his head towards the sky and brushed the Sahabi's body with it. Hazrat Usama radiallahu states, from this I gathered that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was making dua for me. Hazrat Usama proceeded to his army after gaining permission to leave. And on the 12th of Rabi al-Awwal, <coughs> on the 11th year after the Hijrah, he announced his departure. He was just about to climb onto his horse when a messenger sent by his mother, Hazrat Umm Ayman, radiallahu anha, arrived and informed him that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was close to leaving this world. Hearing this unbearable news, Hazrat Usama and Hazrat Abu Ubaidah and the other companions, radiallahu anhum, they all returned to Medina because this was very heavy news now. And they truly found the Prophet ﷺ to be very close to meeting the angel of death. ﷺ. On that very day, just a little after midday, on the 12th of Rabi al Awwal, the passing away of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ occurred. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. The army of Hazrat Usama who then returned to Medina Manawara. But in the last days of Rabi al Awwal, of that year uh, and against the opposition of some people the army was sent to go to battle by the leader of that time Amir al-Mu'mineen Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu Hazrat Usama reached Abna and after a fierce battle he gained victory over the Kuffar he was able to kill his father's murderer and many other disbelievers Thereafter, returning to Medina Manawara after 40 days whilst bringing a large amount of war gains. When the Prophet ﷺ has passed away reportedly on the same day on which he was born, some people use this as an objection and say, Why do you commemorate the Mawlid of Rasulullah? ﷺ? The answer to this is quite simple. First of all, there is no mourning after three days in Islam. After someone has passed away, after three days, there's no more matam and sorrow and grief. So to commemorate the mawlid, it is fine and permissible. It doesn't mean you have to stay sorrowful and grieving for over 1400 years now. This is against Islam. Secondly, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, mentions, Hayati khairul lakum wa wafati khairul lakum. My life is good for you and my passing away is also good for you. Because his life was good for us because he mentions that, you know, he narrated hadith to us. Hadith were narrated, people learned and sought knowledge of the deen during his lifetime. But after he passed away, what happened? The good and bad deeds of the ummah are presented to him. When our good deeds are presented, he said, I praise Allah, thanking him. When our bad deeds are presented to him, he sallallahu alayhi wasallam seeks forgiveness for our sake. Okay? So, even after his passing away, there is uh, still a mercy from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So, this is permissible to commemorate the milad of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another thing we need to bear in mind that this army of Hazrat Usama, it had been sent by who? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Because the army had been sent out, then later after Nabi alayhi salatu salam has passed away, some Muslims were hesitant, some of the Sahaba, they're thinking, now this army is going to go, we're at a very weak point now. Maybe we should turn, return the army back. That's when Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he spoke <laughs> up and firmly said that basically the army which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam sent out, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq cannot return that army. <laughs> In following the command of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So Nabi alayhi salatu salam's command was fulfilled by Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Amir al Mu'minin, the first Khalifa of the Muslims. Okay? One of the purposes of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this world was what? To propagate the final divine message of Islam to the entire creation and make final the proof of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, how successful was he in this? 
The answer to this is that all of the prophets and messengers alayhim was salatu was salam who came to this world propagated the message of Allah according to their ability. However, if you gather together the efforts of all the other prophets alayhim was salam and you put it against the efforts of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it would be like holding a candle in front of the sun. Okay? And that is how great the efforts of our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are. Okay? So, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, his efforts outshone those of all of the other prophets alayhi wasalam. The propagation of the message of Allah carried out by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasalam was revolutionary to say the least. The world gained the world gained a new life thanks to the dedication of the final Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was Khatamun Nabiyyin the final Prophet of Allah Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasallam mentioned Ana Khatamun Nabiyyin La Nabiyya Ba'di I am the seal of the Prophets and there shall be no Prophet after me He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that there will be 30 liars after me 30 Dajjals, all of them will be claiming to be a Nabi. But all of them will be great liars. Okay? And the final of these Dajjals will be the one-eyed Dajjal. Okay? Who will come towards the end of times and he will finally be defeated by Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu salam when he returns. But the Prophet sallallahu makes it clear there will be 30 of these liars who will claim to be prophets. And many of them have already came and gone. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our iman. Our iman is in the Prophet ﷺ being the final messenger. Anyone who says that another Prophet can come today, be born today. Okay? And that the finality of prophethood will not be affected. Some people who have this belief, that is kufr. Okay? And our belief of Ahl Sunnah is that no Prophet can be born Today, when Nabi Isa al-Islam comes, he's not going to come as a new prophet. He is going to come as an ummati of our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa Okay? So, the, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned in the Holy Quran. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-Islam adina. Today I have perfected your religion for you and completed my favor upon you and chosen Islam as a religion for you. After understanding this, what need is there now to ask how successful the Prophet ﷺ was? Indeed, he was immensely successful. If you look in the world today, how many you know millions and you know billions of Muslims there are? Okay, the great amount of Muslims there have been for 1400 years. It shows clearly how Nabi ﷺ was the most successful Nabi, and the fact that his holy Quran was protected by Allah himself until this very day. Previous books have been changed. Previous messages have been changed. People have gone astray, the Jews, the Christians, the ancient nations. But the message of Islam is still perfect today. When the deen of Islam became complete and the Prophet ﷺ fulfilled his obligation as a Nabi of Allah, then it was time for the order of Allah to be fulfilled. Meaning, إِنَّكَ مَيِّتٌ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتُونَ Indeed, you shall also pass away and indeed they shall also pass away and this was established at this point but we need to understand that the prophets alayhi salatu was salam they are not just dead and rotted away astaghfirullah because nabi alayhi salatu was salam he mentions uh, that inna allah azza wa jalla harrama ala al ardi an ta'kula ajsad al anbiya fa nabiyullah hayyun yurzaqu that allah has made it haram on the earth to consume the bodies of the prophets. So the Prophet of Allah is alive and given risk. And then that the prophets are alive and that they pray in their graves. And then he mentioned about Nabi Musa alayhi salam on the night of Mi'raj, praying in his grave. And all the other prophets being alive on the night of Mi'raj, he's meeting them, etc. So the prophets enjoy a very special life and enjoy the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in barzakh and this is the maqam of the anbiya alayhi wa salatu wa salam and indeed even the pious servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was aware of his passing away before it happened and he informed people of it at different occasions hence in hajjatul wada' 
Rasulullah said, I may not perform Hajj with you after this. And the sermon given at Ghadir Khum hinted towards a similar message as well. Even though the word La Allah was used, then maybe, perhaps I will not be with you. La Allah. Even though this word was used thus concealing a direct message of his passing away, the Prophet ﷺ did not use it in the sermon delivered in the final Hajj. Rather, he explicitly and with complete certainty alerted the people about his passing away, that it is imminent. Hazrat Uqba ibn Amr anhu, he states, Once the Prophet ﷺ emerged from his home and he visited the graves of the martyrs of Uhud, the Shuhada of Uhud. He then climbed the mimbar and said, Inni faratun lakum. I am a predecessor to you. I am a forerunner to you, meaning I will pass before you in demise and your witness as well. I am a witness upon you as well. I swear by Allah, I see the fountain of Kawthar from here where I stand. So, these words, inni faratul lakum, they mean that I shall experience passing away before you all in order to prepare the fountain of Kawthar for you or the pond of Kawthar. <coughs> this is an incident before the sickness in which the Prophet ﷺ eventually passed away due to it. And When the sickness of his passing had eventually begun, the Prophet ﷺ, without using the word La Allah, probably, <coughs> he alerted his beloved daughter, Sayyida Fatima, anha, of his imminent <coughs> passing away. It's mentioned in Bukhari, in his sickness from which he passed away, the Prophet ﷺ called his daughter, Hazrat Fatima, anha, and he whispered something to her which caused her to cry. He then whispered something a second time to her that caused her to become happy and smile. When the pure wives, anhunna, they asked her about this, she replied, the first time the Prophet said to me that he was going to pass away due to this illness. That's why she began to cry. And that brought me to tears. He then, the second time, he whispered to me that I shall be the first amongst his family to follow him in passing away. And this is what caused me to smile. Hence, before his passing away, the Prophet ﷺ had foreknowledge. He knew of his passing away. And there is no difficulty in believing this. Because Allah Azza wa Jal informed his beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even of other people's deaths. Okay? Prior to it happening, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, look, he even mentions here, I am going to pass away due to this illness and you are going to be the first one to join me. That look how Rasulullah Alaihi Salatu Wasallam knew about this, that you will be the first from my family to follow me. So you see, how the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi is gifted this knowledge of the unseen by Allah azza wa jal. <clears throat> so, if this is accepted, then why can it be rejected that Allah azza wa jal informed the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam of his own passing away? He informed us of other people passing away. So why would he not know of his own passing? Historians are divided regarding the time of the beginning of the final illness. Nevertheless, on the 20th or the 22nd night of Safar, Al-Muzaffar, on the 11th after the Hijrah, the Prophet ﷺ went to Jannatul Baqi and after returning, his health became slightly worse. It was the turn of Sayyida Maymuna, anha, his blessed wife, to host him. On Monday, the condition of the Prophet ﷺ became worse. And upon his wish, with the permission of all the pure wives, he stayed at the home of Hazrat Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha, helped by his uncle Hazrat Abbas and by Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhuma to go to her house. 
The Prophet وسلم, led all of the prayers, all of the salah in Masjid al Nabawi for as long as he had strength to do so. And then he appointed Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq anhu, as Imam afterwards. A total of 17 salah were led by Sayyidina Abu Bakr anhu, during this period. Okay? This was a clear sign for the Muslims that the Imam of the Ummah and the best of mankind after the Prophets and Messengers is Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Because the one who is made the Imam in the Namaz, then he is certainly the Imam in the Muslims' worldly affairs. So an Imam for the Salah is definitely the, was Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu because he was the best of the Sahaba. That's why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa appointed him as the Imam. And he was the one who was Khalifa to awwal the first Khalifa. And he was the first Khalifa after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Once at the time of Zuhr Salah, after feeling an improvement in his health, and after making ghusl, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa proceeded to Masjid al-Nabawi, whilst being supported by Hazrat Abbas and Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhumah. Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu was at this time leading the Salah. And upon hearing the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he began moving back from the Musalla of Imamat. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, however, stopped, stopped this by gesturing to him. And Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam gestured to him to continue to lead. Okay? So Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu as well as the Uda Sahaba then performed their salah whilst they were overcome by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa They were like glancing towards Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After the namaz, a khutbah, a speech was given by, was given and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa spoke of the excellences as well as the rights of the Ansar, the Sahaba of Medina. Some advice and rules of Islam were also bestowed and so was Surah Asr and another ayah of the Holy Quran recited by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Seven dinars were present in the house. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha, Bring those dinars to me, seven gold coins, so that I may spend it in the path of Allah. He then distributed through Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu and did not leave a single coin of silver or gold in his house. He had spent everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sickness of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam continued and worsened. On the Monday of his passing away, he felt an improvement in his condition. He lifted the curtain of his home and was able to see the people performing Fajr Salah. As his home was next to the masjid, this sight pleased Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he smiled. People saw this and they became delighted, excitedly asking, Do you want to come into the masjid? Yet he gestured no to them. And he closed the curtain of his home. Alas, this was the last time all the Sahaba were able to see the most beautiful creation of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And Hazrat Anas ibn Malik anhu says, the face of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was like a page of the Holy Quran. Meaning it was beautiful and white. And at this time, bear in mind that Nabi alayhi salatu wa and he sees the Sahaba he saw them praying behind Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And this is the maqam of Siddiqiyat of Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu anhu, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was happy and pleased that Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu is the leader and all the Sahaba are gathered behind him. So this was the ultimate decision of Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa thereafter lapsed into states of consciousness and unconsciousness. He would lose his senses as well at this time due to sorrow. Hazrat Fatima radiallahu anha, she said, Wa qarba abahu, that alas, the you know, uneasiness of my father, 
the difficulty of my father. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam mentioned, my daughter, your father shall be at ease after this. Then he continuously said, Ma'alladheena an'amallahu alayhim with those who Allah has blessed. <clears throat> you know, we pray in Surah Fatiha, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, guide us on the path of the righteous. What do we say next? Sirat al Ladina and Amta alayhim, the path of those who you have favored. And in Surah An Nisa, another verse mentions those who Allah has favored. Ma'alladheena an'amallahu alayhim. Who are those who Allah has favored in Surah uh, An Nisa? When Allah mentions, He says, Nabiyeen, prophets. Siddiqeen, truthful ones, Shuhada, martyrs, and Salihin, the pious ones. The four groups are mentioned. The Prophet ﷺ was repeating this portion of the verse. And sometimes he was also saying, Allahumma fir rafiq al a'la. That, oh Allah, the highest companion. And then he would say, La ilaha illallah, there is none worthy of worship except Allah. The Prophet ﷺ further stated that there are hardships for passing away, for death. Hazrat Aisha radiallahu narrates that whilst in better health, Rasulullah ﷺ would always say that the Prophet ﷺ are given the choice of accepting death or remaining in this dunya. He mentioned this. Okay? When Rasulullah ﷺ said these words, Ma'alladina with those then she says that I understood that he was choosing the next world because he was saying, Ma'alladina an'amallahu alayhim. O Allah, with those who you have favored. So, who are those who Allah has favored? You know, those who the favor of Allah is upon. Then they are those she understood that they are the prophets, the truthful ones, the martyrs, the pious, those who have passed before. A short while before, Nabi alayhi salatu was salam passed away. Hazrat Abdul Rahman ibn Abu Bakr ibn Abi Bakr radiallahu, the brother of Sayyid Aisha radiallahu, entered the room with a fresh miswak in his hand. Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam began to look at him, and from this, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu understood that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wanted miswak. He immediately took it. She immediately took it and she made it soft and gave it in his hands. And Nabi alayhi salatu wasallam with his blessed hands, he thereafter used this miswak. Just after midday, the Prophet ﷺ, his breathing became heavy. His lips suddenly moved and the following was heard from him. Listen to this very carefully towards the end of his lifetime. He's saying, As-salatu wa ma malakat aymanukum. That namaz. What is the Prophet ﷺ saying? Namaz. As-salatu wa ma malakat aymanukum. Pray your namaz. And look after those who are under your care. These two important things he mentioned. To look after those who are under your care. And first of all, what did he mention? Namaz. And these are towards the final moments of his sallallahu alayhi wasallam on this world. There was a jug of water nearby in which he would put his blessed hand in a number of times. And thereafter he would wipe his blessed face with it. He also continuously covered his face. And then he would remove it with the blanket that covered him as well. Hazrat Aisha anha was sitting beside him and holding him to her chest. Without notice, Rasulullah lifted his, head to, his hand to the sky and pointing with his finger said three times, But only the highest companion. Now he desired none other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah. Right to meet with Allah again, the, the highest Rafiq al A'la. Then these words were on the blessed tongue of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam as his head dropped down and his eyes wide open, staring at the roof. His soul troubled to meet to meet its Creator. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. There is a great difference of opinion within historians regarding the date of demise. You know, it's famously held to be 12th of Rabi'ul Awwal. However, the ulama of Sirah unanimously agreed that it was a Monday in Rabi'ul Awwal. But as for the particular date, there's different opinions in the history books. Nevertheless, it is famously known that his passing away occurred 
on Monday, the 12th of Rabi' al Awwal, towards the afternoon and in the 11th year after the Hijrah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the true love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and give us the ability to follow in his footsteps and implement his sunnah.